Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may God's rich grace, mercy, and peace fill your hearts and your minds now and always. Amen. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Lord, we give thanks to you that you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you that as our triune God, that you are with us always, that you have created us and continue to sustain us, that you have redeemed us by your precious blood, Lord, and that you continue to lead us by your word each day, sustaining our faith and strengthening it. Lord, lead us always to be your witnesses, to declare the truth and promise that you are the way, the truth, and the life. This we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you all, but for me, certain commercial jingles will get stuck in my head. Depending on, it doesn't have to be necessarily on the radio or on the television, but certain jingles just get stuck there. And There's one that has been stuck in my head since 2008, if you can imagine that. I had to look it up to find out exactly when I first heard the commercial, but it was, uh, goes uh, uh, something like this, Coca-Cola Classic, it's always the one. Whenever there is fir- thirst, it's always the real thing. Some of you probably have heard that. It wasn't actually Coke's official slogan. Uh, for some of you a little older, maybe you know that was Coke's slogan back in the 60s, actually. But it was part of their 2000 ad campaign. And I don't know why it stuck in my mind so well that it even I remembered it as I was writing the sermon, as I was thinking about it. But maybe it was because of, well, I, when, back then I used to drink a lot more soda, and maybe I agreed a little bit with that statement. That it's the real thing. I've tried many different versions of cola. Almost every grocery store has their own variety. But it seems like Coca-Cola has just a certain flavor to it, a certain taste to it. And I don't know if you agree with me or not. It's okay if you don't. And I'm not encouraging you necessarily to go buy a Coca-Cola. But I do want you to think about the real things. The things that there's no substitution for in this life. Think about it just a minute. It doesn't have to be just Coca-Cola. How about food? Uh, Maybe you remember grandma's cooking. And even though you try to this day to make those old brownies she made or those old cookies or, or whatever casserole she used to make, you just don't have the right measuring cup that she had that really wasn't actually a cup. It was more of a mug that had been passed down. And There's nothing like it. Or maybe you remember uh, your, the first time you got behind the wheel of the car and you remember the fear and excitement you had. Nothing like that again, is there? Your first kiss. There's nothing like your first kiss. Or the first time you look down into the eyes of your son or your daughter, a newborn child. Nothing like it. Nothing can repeat that feeling, those emotions, all that it was. And you know this to be true, don't you? There's certain things that there's no substitution for. Oh, there's times where you can do it again. You'll look at, many of you, you'll look down into your children's eyes thousands of times. You'll have thousands of Coca-Colas. You'll, but there's only that first time once. And when you think about that, there's no substitute for it, is there? There's nothing that can take the place of it. There are there's things in this life that there are that you can, you can, it doesn't matter too much to you, but there's those things that no substitution will fit. And maybe it goes without saying, God is one of those things. There is no substitute for the true and real God. And I say that, and I know that on on one hand, that that's rather obvious to you. You all are in church this morning because you must believe that uh, to some degree. And yet, do we believe that? How strongly do we believe that? We have the words of Jesus in John 14, verse 6, and my compromands know this verse. I had them memorize it. You all should memorize it too. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Again, Peter, as he's preaching to the folks in in Jerusalem, he's getting ready, getting fired up, and he says in Acts chapter 4, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Jesus is that name. And then again, Paul, he's preaching to the young pastor in, in, in in 1 Timothy here. There is one God. One mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all men. The testimony given in its proper time. Jesus, the mediator between God and man. These verses are somewhat familiar verses. These verses go without saying, and they should be obvious to us. Verses that are part of our confession. Part of God's word. But do we believe these verses 
do we believe that statement that God, there is no substitute but, but for God so strongly that we live those verses, that we live that faith? We live in a world that is full of what we call tolerance, a world that is full of uh, these shrug your shoulders and nod your heads towards idolatry. And it's not necessarily the gross idolatry of the Old Testament. We know that gross idolatry of the Old Testament, whether it was Baal or Ashtaroth or, or Molech or any of the other Canaanite gods, and the, the children of Israel would offer their offerings, they would offer their children and their sacrifices, turning their back on God. But we don't see that so much anymore. We do still see idolatry, though. This idolatry of self, uh, the self, what is pleasing to me, what brings me most comfort. This uh, hero worship. Uh, where we put athletes up on the same level as gods and where we put musicians and we put political figures on that same level. But you know, there's really one thing that more than those other obvious examples that is insidious. And this is not just apathy, which many of you know I have an issue with, but it's that insidious nature that it doesn't seem to matter for us as Christians when someone says, well, it's just all the same God anyway. You've heard that before? It's all the same God anyway. The Jews, the Christians, the Mormons, the Muslims, the Jehovah's Witnesses, well, it's just one God. After all, the name Allah, that the Muslims, uh, that's just a word for Lord in Arabic. I was at a clergy and court conference a couple of weeks ago in San, uh, San Diego, and at that conference, we opened with an invocation. We had an invocation before our meal and a benediction when we closed. And the pastor who led, this, uh, led those prayers, well, she confessed to be a Christian pastor. Over and over again, she talked about God and this general idea that we all worship the same spiritual being. And I don't know if that makes you cringe, but it should. Because our God, the word that God has given us identifies who our God is. It identifies him as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It identifies him as one true God, that there are no other gods. And if you forget everything else I say, listen to this next point. If you don't know Christ, you don't know God. If you don't know Christ, you don't know God. If you forget everything else, remember that. Because that is so important to our understanding of God. Because when we talk about how we know God, how we know who God is. We know Him through Christ, and we know Him through the salvation won by Christ for us on the cross. We know Him by the fact that He loved us so much to send His Son into the world to die for us. And that is how we know the grace of our God. Many people will say, well, what about the fact that the Old Testament is similar to the, Jew the Bible of the Jews, that it's similar to Judaism? That's true, but if you don't know Christ, you don't see how... All the grace of God in the Old Testament. You don't see the hand of God at work in the Old Testament. Even that Old Testament sacrificial system that so often the Jews point to, that was meant to point to Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, the author of Hebrews says that there is a better sacrifice, that not all the blood of beasts could save, but Jesus' blood saves. Jesus' blood is that which redeems us. But if you don't know that, you don't know God. From the very beginning, God revealed him to, to himself to us as a triune God. All the way back to the very first chapter of the Bible, we see God the Father, Creator, Sustainer. God the Son, who is the Word, who brought life to, the, and live, life to all flesh. The Holy Spirit, who brought calm to the chaos of the deep. Right in that first chapter of the Bible. Even with the fall into sin, we see God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as God sent His Son into the world. The promise right in Genesis 3 that salvation would be through His Son. Throughout the Old Testament, how many times do we see the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, leading and guiding the people of God, directing them. As we look at God's Word, it is rich with images of the Trinity. It was rich with images of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and that salvation that we have through Him. Although that word Trinity is never used in the Bible, it wasn't used till about the 3rd century by a bishop by the name of Tertullian, you can hardly go through Scripture without seeing the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But how often do we believe that so strongly that we confess it? 
that we confess it in the world that we live. You know, it's easy on a Sunday morning to confess our faith. I, once you get out of bed, once you get here, once we're all together, you know, it's easy to do that because we're all like-minded. We all agree for the most part. Maybe we have little differences here and there, but we know that we're going to be fairly comfortable. But how strongly do you believe it? Do you believe it strongly enough to go out into the world and share that same truth, to confront the lies of the world? Unfortunately, I think for many Christians, our sin is silent. It's not a matter that we don't believe in the Trinity. It's not a matter of the, the fact that maybe, even though we don't fully understand it or comprehend it, that we, that we doubt that God could be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's the fact that we are silent. We're silent in the face of the, of the false teachers of, of the world. We don't want to ruffle any feathers, so we don't respond when someone says, well, it's all the same God anyway, so it don't matter. We don't want to ruffle feathers, so we just keep our mouths shut. We don't want to cause offense, so we just stay silent. We don't want to upset the status quo. Many of you know the date, October 31st, 1517. As Lutherans, you know that to be the day we now call Reformation Sunday, Reformation Day. And Reformation marks the day that Martin Luther hung those 95 theses on the castle church in Wittenberg. He could no longer remain silent. He could no longer remain silent in the face of the false teachings, in the face of these lies that were being told. He saw the hopelessness of the people. Look outside the doors, folks. There's people who are hopeless out there. People who are crying, who don't know that there is salvation in Jesus Christ. And, they, and you don't have to look far. You can look in your own homes, among your own families. You can look in, in our communities right around us. And that hopelessness is everywhere. Jesus says we are to be the light. John chapter 3, as he was talking to Nicodemus, did you hear that? He said that the, those who are of the light are to be the light to the world. We're to be those ones who bring the light of salvation, to bring that message of hope to bring the hope to a darkened a generation darkened by sin. Because we have been born again by water and the Spirit. Isn't that why we start our worship every week with the invocation to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Because that's where we began our spiritual walk with God. As, he baptized, as we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each week we remember that baptism. Each week we begin that way. We close our service with that blessing. We confess our sins in the name of the triune God, and know that our sins are forgiven. And we have hope. We have hope and promise because we know the Lord. We know Christ. We have hope and promise because we know that one day we will rest secure with Him. We have seen the light of salvation. We have been born again. We are not called to remain silent but to be bold in our proclamation, to be bold in that message of salvation. We know that verse, John 3.16, so well, but we need to live that verse. Live that verse in our lives, in our communities. Live that verse, not remaining silent, because there is no substitute. There is no substitute, no other way under heaven. Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Only by Him, will we be saved? And that is the message we have to proclaim. That is the message that brings hope. That is the message that brings light to the darkness. And I can't help but to invite you to say it with me. You know it by heart, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. And that is the hope and promise we have. Amen. Please bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you that you have sent your son Christ Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, that he has paid the price for us and that we are redeemed. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit who leads us to this confession of faith, that we know that we are saved through you. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be bold in our witness of you, that we would no longer be silent, but that we would lift up our voices in, in, in honor of you. Lord, may it not only be our words, but our actions as well that bring confession of our faith. Even in times where it might not be comfortable, Lord, help us to share the truth that there is no substitute, 
that You are the real thing. You are our salvation. In all things we praise and thank You. In the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Lord. Amen, amen, and amen.